Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video on the channel. Today we're going to be covering five of the biggest changes coming in with the new update coming out September 13th, which will be bringing, of course, the new Hit DLC. There's a lot of exciting things to look forward to, given the fact this is an old location that a lot of us seen before in Fallout 3, and now we're going to be seeing it in Fallout 76 with new graphics and everything like that, and seeing where they take the story, given the fact it's a different time frame. With all that being said though, guys, I hope you all enjoy. If you do click on that like button make sure to subscribe and before we dive straight into the video here's a word from today's channel sponsor today's channel sponsor is raid shadow legends a dark fantasy mmo rpg where you can collect over 600 champions and fight your way through dungeons where you can fight some crazy looking bosses speaking of bosses this is my favorite boss and this is bommel the dreadhorn bommel is basically a huge lava rhino that throws bombs down on you as you're trying to attack him he can also summon Dreadbone minions that blow up and wreck your entire team when they take a turn, so he's a very tough one to fight and a very tough one to beat. The cheeky tactic is to use deflection artifact sets to send his own bombs back at him. It's a really handy strategy and really helps to take down his health. This month, Raid is going to be getting the new Forge Pass Season 3, including some amazing rewards, including some new champions, as well as some champion skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. And that's not all, one of the favourite champions is going to get the upgrade he deserves. Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion and this month we get to see how he turns out. There's never been a better time to get started. Use the code DKRISES for a bunch of free items to instantly level your strongest champion all the way to level 50 and a 5 star ascension. On top of that as well, new players that use my link or scan the QR code right now will get a free starter pack worth almost $30 and the free champion Aina. You'll find these here in your inbox for the next 30 days. Alright, so the first biggest thing coming into the game is of course the new location and area which is the pit. This is a really cool location, it's one that we've seen in Fallout 3, it brings to life Pittsburgh and it's a big industrial location, really cool, something that we don't really see much in Fallout 76, so it's bringing in a completely different look and it brings in that kind of dark story with it as well, which you'll see in one of the missions that it adds in. It also brings in a lot of new rewards and items coming in, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on in the video. Currently, as it stands as well, it has two different missions that we're going to be seeing and being able to play through when it comes in. Union Jews and Ashes to Fire. Union Jews is all about giving a kind of help and hand to the Union. There's three different randomised objectives that you'll play through when you do this mission, and there's a loophole of nine different ones that you can play through. On top of that as well, there's also little optional objectives, which will give you better rewards if you complete them alongside the main objectives, so definitely consider doing them when you play through it. Basically, the entire aim of this one is to just give that help and hand to the Union to undermine the fanatics. You'll have stuff like retrieve sto stolen supplies, destroy their chem lab and a few others which I'll let you guys find out for yourselves when it comes into the game. The second mission is going to be Ashes to Fire. This one you're going to meet with a new character called Danilo who is an elusive former fanatic who has switched sides and wants to help the Union out by kind of saving their captives and stuff like that and trying to basically make good of what all the bad things he's done in the past. He kind of wants to turn his self over and be a good person now. So with this one, basically, you'll be sent into the deep of the Sanctum, which is a new location added in with the pit, and it's basically a former Union stronghold where you aim to go down there and free as many captives as possible. Now, from playing this one, I can definitely say this one out of the two is my favourite, just for the sheer kind of location and stuff that it adds in. It's really cool and has that old vibe that we used to get with Fallout 3 and Fallout out new vegas and stuff where you've got this really dark storyline you've got dodgy stuff going on there and it's just really cool and a really awesome feel so definitely enjoy playing through this one guys it's really really cool a couple of side notes about the pit coming in as well basically when you actually do the expeditions you can only receive rewards once a week but once you complete every expedition you will earn a new currency which we'll talk about further later on and you can use these to buy rewards also, you can only start an expedition once a day. However, basically, let's say you've got three friends. You make up a team of four. You start an expedition. They can all join yours. You can play through it. Then you go and your friend goes, starts an expedition. Then you all play through that and then so on and so on. And then once that, they've all done theirs, you can move on and join random people if you want. So you can do as many as you like in a day, but you can only personally start one. To make this a little bit easier as well, so you can find people to help you through the expeditions, they are setting up a new team, which is an 
expedition team which will of course just let people know that you want to play expeditions and stuff like that oh and of course don't forget the trogs that's also came in which is a new enemy which are really really tough and at times extremely challenging so be prepared for them to kill you a couple of times now the second biggest exciting change with this one on my list is going to be the White Springs revamp. It's basically been redecorated and it's now run by the responders. However, there is a very strange character there which you will find as soon as you enter who kind of is the in-between person between the so-called management and the responders. Now there's a lot of people, include myself, now thinking, hang on, who is this management? And a lot of us have come to the decision and kind of came up with our own conspiracies that the management is the enclave which could be leading us to the future quest lines or future expeditions down the line. I think Tonic did a really good video on this covering all of the lines that the person goes over and stuff so definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. Now with this kind of redecoration basically when you go inside of White Springs there's two different kind of instance locations now you've got the shops area and then you've got like the responders area. Now the actual shops area has actually had a couple of changes as well there's now got a script machine down there as well as a gold bullion station added in so that's kind of like now like a one-stop shop so happy days about that another exciting point about the white springs redecoration side of things is white springs is now going to be a minerva spawn location so now we're going to have fort atlas creator foundation and the white springs as minerva spawn points at number three this is a new feature that's coming in as well and basically they have updated the fast traveling system before if you wanted a fast travel to say the white springs you'd fast travel there then if you wanted to go inside you'd have to go through another loading screen well now they've completely streamlined that and now uh, you can actually go to different locations and fast travel directly to the inside of the locations this isn't available for all locations but you can do this at creator foundation Fort Atlas and the Rusty Pick. Now going back to what we said briefly uh, earlier on, at number four, this is going to be the new currency that they're adding in. And this new currency is going to be called Stamps. In this update, basically, this currency is getting added in as a kind of reward system for completing expeditions. So every time you complete an expedition, you will receive some stamps. And basically, these stamps will be used to go and buy unique rewards themed around the pit from a vendor called Giuseppe Della Ripa, who is also in the White Springs. Here's a little list on screen and here's what basically his little vendor station looks like inside the White Springs and just a little look at basically what he's got up for sale and stuff. Stuff to look forward to for when he's a player. Now finally at number five this is going to be the new weapon and new power armor that we're getting. So first of all the new weapon is going to be of course the auto axe. This is a weapon that was originally brought in with Fallout 3 and it was meant to come in the Wastelanders update. However, they pushed it back. I'm guessing around the time they must have had kind of brief plans that they wanted to add in the expeditions and add in Pittsburgh and stuff like that. So they pushed it back and now we actually get to see it. It's a kind of similar to a chainsaw. You can get legendary versions of it. And with this, we're actually also going to be able to get legendary um, chainsaws as well. And I think drills possibly, but I need to double check that. Now on top of this as well, like I say, we are also going to be getting the Union Power Armor, which is a full new set of Power Armor, just like the T65, T51, whichever one you like. So this is going to be a whole new one getting added in, and it does have a couple of bonuses as well if you wear a full set of it. So if you have a full set of the Union Power Armor on, you will receive plus 150 Poison Resistance, and similar to the Excavator Power Armor, you will also get a bonus of plus 75 Carry Weight. Now I think that is 25 less than the Excavator of power armor but you do get the poison resistance on top so pretty good i'm excited for it and yeah it looks really good as well a little point for this as well if anyone does not know already which i'm presuming a lot of you won't uh, these both these items will be season rewards they're meant to be so you will get them from leveling up through the season so they're not kind of stuck behind this really slow hard grind that the pit brings in with their reward system a really cool thing about it is though people aren't going to come in and just complete the pit and basically get all the rewards within the week it's not possible unless you use some exploit or something that someone finds uh, but at the moment i don't know if there's any like that probably is in the dark depths of the fallout world now finally i do actually have a kind of little point on here as well like a little secret one which i wanted to throw on i had the main five ones but at number six this is a little one just to help out and add a bit of convenience for everyone murmur is now going to be getting 
her inventory kind of changed. So instead of being able to buy 10 legendary modules, you're now gonna be able to buy 100 and the vault steel has also gone up to 500. So big changes there, saves you server hopping and stuff like that. The only thing I don't know about it is whether or not this is kind of capped. So maybe how you can buy like 100 legendary modules, whereas before you could like jump servers and keep buying them and jump another server, buy some more legendary uh, modules, sorry. I don't know if that's capped now. So if you jump servers, it'll keep the same amount, kind of like legendary script and everything like that. Other than that though, guys, that is the biggest changes I could see and know about that's coming in with the pit. No doubt there will be more coming in and stuff like that and some secret changes. So I will cover them as soon as I know about them. But for now, guys, that is everything coming in. Make sure to show some love to today's channel sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. And while you're down scrolling down towards the description, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. But now though, guys, that is everything I had to say. So thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you for your cooperation.